Today I discuss about the introduction of recombinant DNA into the host cell that is the RDNA which is formed by the biotechnology or genetic engineering which can be introduced into the host cell through different methods. There are generally six methods. One is transformation, second one is transduction, third one is electroporation, fourth one is liposome and fifth one micro injection also last one is the micro projectile. So come to the first point transformation. Transformation we have already know about the transformation this is a process and by this process the uptake of foreign DNA by a cell from its surrounding area that is the foreign DNA can be uptaken by the cell from the surrounding area this type of approach is generally used for introduction or introducing RDNA into the host cell. This is the process. The transformation was developed by Mandel and Higa in 1979. Okay. And uh, majority of the cells including E. coli, yeast, mammalian cells are poorly accessible to DNA molecules but treatment with CaCl2 enhances the binding of DNA to cell surface and the growing of E. coli cells are isolated and suspended into the calcium chloride solution to increase the frequency of transformation. The recombinant DNA is then added to the treated cell. The cells are plated on a suitable medium for the selection so transformation frequency can be further increased by using special strains of E. coli and some specific condition during the transformation. So this one is the first uh, method. Second one is the transfection. First one is the transformation. Second one is the transfection. Introduction of recombinant DNA packaged as virion. In case of transfection, the introduction of recombinant DNA packaged as virions. The vectors have cos sequence. We have known that cos side vector that is cosmit. The cos sequence such as cosmid, phasmid and lambda phage vectors are packaged in vitro into empty phage head. The packaging produce complete lambda particle with recombinant DNA. These newly synthesized fudge particles are infected into the E. coli cell. And by this process, that is the introduction of foreign DNA into bacteria by bacterial fudge, is called transfection. So transfection is also a process. Uh, here the uh, foreign DNA can be introduced into the host cell. Okay. Next. This infection by the fudge particle containing RDNA is very efficient and uh, rather than the transformation. So transfection is highly efficient or effective rather than the transformation. Next, third one, electroporation. Electroporation, this is also and uh, this is also a process of introduction of foreign DNA or recombinant DNA into the cell uh, by a very brief exposure to a very high volt. Very brief exposure to a very high volt and short electric in pulses ranging from 4000 to 8000 volt per sim. This process induces 
a transient channel or pores in the cell membrane and increase it permeability so this process this voltage formation leads to the formation of a channel or pores that induces the permeability and this force or channel give passage to the foreign dna which can enter into the cell provided dna is in direct contact with the membrane so electrophoresis is very effective because it produces some pores or channels that can uh, increase the permeability of the foreign dna and the foreign dna directly contact with the membrane the electrophoresis pulse is generated by discharging a capacitor across the electrodes in a specially designed electrophoresis chamber either a high voltage pulse of short duration or a low voltage pulse of long duration so when the voltage is high then the duration is short but when the duration is long then the voltage is low this is uh, used in case of electroporation the protoplast on the so called naked cell naked cell because we have already Uh, told that the electric voltage can induce some channel or pores that's why so called naked cell are suspended in the ionic solution containing vector dna or rdna so the channel forming cell or cell with uh, for some pores uh, can be suspended within a solution which contains the recombinant dna and then electroporated they are electroporated and then plated and finally transformed colony are selected so electroporation is the process in which the dna can directly contact with the cell membrane and enter into the cell so transfer of desired genes through electroporation is carried out in the protoplast of rice wheat maize sorghum petunia tobacco etc 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 so these are the three method next come to the liposome mediated gene transfer liposome mediated gene transfer this one is also most important one liposome so that a term liposome that is very much related to the lipid that is the lipid form a special structure which is known as liposome and we have already know that the cell membrane contains protein lipid protein out of which the lipid has by their structure and this lipid uh, can facilitate the entry of the gene uh, through the liposome so liposome are the artificial membrane vesicle these are the type of vesicle or lipid bags in which large plasmids are enclosed imagine that uh, suppose a gene which is covered by the lipid molecule we have already know that lipids uh, molecule uh, have two different part one is the <coughs> hydrophilic part and uh, hydrophobic part that is polar and non polar part uh, so um, hydrophilic part are present in outside and hydrophobic part are present in, uh, in the uh, inside uh, and uh, this uh, lipids uh, molecule uh, can cover the gene or foreign dna or rdna uh, which known as liposome and these liposomes are induced to fuse with the protoplast of cell and the liposome uh, easily fused with the uh, cell because the cell membrane has also um, cell membrane has also the um, lipid composition uh, that's why um, the liposome uh, are used as delivery vehicle for gene transfer and dna enter into the protoplast by the endocytosis of liposome the liposome mediated gene transfer involves different steps one is adhesion of liposome to the surface of protoplast second fusion of liposome at the site of adhesion third one release of plasmid into the cell so first one is the adhesion second one is the fusion 
and third one is the release and these uh, release uh, induce the entry of the plasmid into the cell okay the technique is more advantageous because it provides protection of dna or rna from nucleage digestion that is no nucleage rna or dna cannot digest the rdna second one the nucleic acid becomes stable third one low toxicity fourth high degree of multiplication fifth applicability to a wide range of cell type we can use the liposome mediated gene transfer in different cell in different cell and uh, this technique is used in gene transfer in the tobacco carrot petunia etc there are some disadvantage in the liposome mediated gene transfer the disadvantage is that the process has low transfection efficiency and low rate of stable integration these are the uh, <coughs> these are the disadvantage and uh, of the uh, liposome mediated gene transfer also we have told different advantage of the uh, gene transfer liposome mediated gene transfer some cationic liposome containing dc col that is dimethyl amino ethan carbonyl and dope dio leophosphatidyl lithano amine show high transfection activity so this is the specific liposome which can show the high transfection efficiency but the transfection efficiency is not more that is low rate in the liposome mediated gene transfer so these are the four different method of gene transfer and uh, i again uh, discuss about another two or three gene transfer in the second part okay thanks